Hello, this is the analysis of Nathaniel. Uh, a little video here now about... Now, this is me comparing games within the same franchise. So, the game... So, Batman Arkham series. Next one, I'm going to do a prototype series. No, infamous series. Then another one, I'm going to do... That's another... Or a Call of Duty Battlefield. That's one, you know? So, again, it's based on my opinion. So, I'm just going over quick, quickly which one. I, I, you know, I'm comparing them and... You know, based on my experience playing the game, check out my recent, you know, a YouTube, sh the video I made about Spider-Man No Way Home yesterday. Please like, subscribe, share the video. Please, I uh, take the moment, you know. It's free, you know, guys. So, anyways, most immersive. So, in, in my opinion, now, these are third-person open-world, semi-open-world games, you know. Arkham City and Arkham Knight really being those, you know. But... Arkham Asylum really had the most immersive environment because it's a semi-horror. It's more of, it, it, uh, it's really a horror and then uh, you're in the madhouse, right? You're in the madhouse with Joker and Zaz and Sc Scarecrow, you, you know, the, uh, the environment, overall environment just feels scary. It adds an extra layer of um, that uh, horror, of horror, scare, there's the levels of Scarecrow. He's haunting you and hallucinations and all that. So if you wonder like what's real. Um, the, yeah, but, I uh, don't get me wrong, they all have, you know, now, uh, how come my struggles with the open world being kind of bland, there isn't enough people in the open world, it's mainly thugs because everybody evacuates, how come city too, uh, you know, a similar issue with mainly thugs, but, like, you know, I like in the main street, but I really, you know, like, what really, uh, going into our mechanics, what really helps Arkham city is the improvements of mechanics, Arkham Asylum didn't really have a, you know, this is the oldest game, the mechanics are slow. It didn't feel as fluent, the movie wasn't as fluent. Arkham Knight had the best mechanics in it. So you could upgrade, you could grapple the fastest in the game. You could grapple from building and building the fastest and, you know, uh, the Batmobile uh, really helps to uh, get around, you know. The movement, is, running is faster, it's fluent, walking is more, the fighting feels more fluent, you know. Um, yeah, but that's not to say, uh, these ones... So I say the early ones are more challenging. The, you know, Asylum and City, uh, they're more challenging, but uh, Knight really had the more fluent combat, you know? Um, no, boss fights, the best boss fights, no, it's really uh, based on my opinion, but Arkham City had the best boss fights because you had Zaz. You had, um, yeah, you had a racial gold boss fight. The Solomon Grundy boss fight. The one at the end, the spoilers, right? Clayface boss fight. So he had a lot of those iconic, fun boss fights. Asylum had annoying... I, I wasn't a fan of the boss fights. Annoying. Just mainly, I wait for the enemy to I run at you. Then you, I hit them with the batarang. I don't know. A lazy... I don't know. A lazy boss fight design. The only good boss fight is Poison Ivy and Bane. Arkham Might. It relies too much on the, bo on the Batmobile. So you're not really... It's not really Batman fighting the bosses. It's just a Batmobile. You know, Batman in the Batmobile fighting the bosses. Not as creative. So, yeah. I read about Arkham City. And they're the most, uh, they're the most uh, replayable boss fights. I remember. Especially the Mr. Freeze where you had to utilize stealth. And every time you take him, you... Every time you uh, take a hit at Mr. Freeze, there's a different route. Uh, like you can't uh, do that same uh, route again. Because he's going to adapt his suit and adapt and you got to find a way to adapt to the environment and find a way to take him out. Most amount of content is Arkham Knight because Knight has the most amount of challenge modes, time trials, combat or maps. And has the most amount of characters. So per every challenge map or like a combat map, you can play as seven different characters or seven or eight. It's Harley Quinn. Azriel, Red Hood, Batman, Robin, Nightwing, Catwoman. I'm missing someone else, I think. Was Joker in this? I can't remember. But yeah, but um, yeah, it has the most amount. And then, yeah, so you could. There's the. I want the three star rating system, right? So a one being the poorest, a three being the best at performance. But yeah, that's that uh, off the back uh, right there, you know? Um, your most amount of uh, replayability, Arkham Asylum only had Joker and Batman as playable characters in the challenge mode. Uh, Arkham City, although it had a lot of challenge maps, 
didn't really feel no like he didn't have as much nowhere near as much as the Psychon as, as Arkham Knight. So yeah. Side mission, most of them are side missions, Arkham Knight as well. You know the side mission quality, I would say it would go more towards these two. Between these two. Arkham Knight has the most amount of side missions. Really, it, because the world is the world is bigger. The world is the biggest in Arkham Knight, right? You're in actually Gotham City. This one you're in a part of Gotham City. And this one you're just in Arkham Asylum, right? So yeah. We get story you now, this is objective, but a subjective, subjective, I mean. Arkham Knight has probably the weakest story. It doesn't it doesn't utilize the I don't know. Uh, there's too much uh, missing potential in the story. It's Boiler Scarecrow and the, the Arkham Knight. They could have done more with that, and uh, they didn't uh, do enough. They they didn't really uh, do enough with it. And uh, re uh, uh revelations in the story aren't as impactful. Already, a main twist says Arkham City. Now Arkham City, there's, you know, uh, you're not really sure what's. The whole conspiracy between the protocol 10, right? Hugo Strange taking over this, you know, the a prison, the the uh, Arkham City area. So it's like a, you know, it's like a secret city for, to, to trap uh, prisoners. But, but I really like, he wants to uh, destroy, I believe it's uh, a ploy to destroy Gotham. And spoilers, spoilers, so skip ahead, but Risha Gold has something to do with it and just the conspiracy behind it, right? Arkham, Arkham Asylum too, like, I had a great story. Trying to catch a Joker. You're trying to I get through all these layers and Arkham Asylum, man. It's been taken over, right? So, yeah, but maybe sabotage and uh, getting back control of the uh, the uh, madhouse, you know. But again, City again, City had Joker. You had Joker. You had racial goalie and many factors. Right? It used Two Face, Penguin, Catwoman. You switch between Catwoman and Batman, right? So there's a dual story going on, you know, perspective. Um, well, no, backtracking the most of my backtracking is probably no, they all are backtracking, but Asylum and City Night is more like a natural, a forward, a progression. Although you're going to be going back to areas, right? You're going back and forth areas, but for the most part, in night, you're going once you reach an area, you're gonna uh, progress past that point. You're gonna, uh, you're not gonna go back to that, like for example, the Ace Chemicals building, right? It gets blown, spoilers, spoilers, right? Near the start of the game, it gets blown up, but it's one of the main missions, and you don't go back to it. But Asylum, you're going back from, um, you know, a facility to facility, Maddox area to, you know, going back to uncover secrets, again, information, intel, city, same idea, right? There's lots of backtracking. Uh, best quality side missions, though, they all... Uh, city, I yeah, probably had the best quality side missions. Right? Challenging. Well, a mix of challenging, fun, not too hard, not too easy. Um, Asylum as well, but Asylum was mainly a story, very story driven. A mission, you go from this mission to that mission. You know, but puzzles. And part of it has to do with the puzzles and the utilization of his gadgets, right? So, the utilization of his gadgets, obviously, at night being the newest game. It has the most amount of gadgets, right? He has the most amount of gadgets, and even though some of the gadgets you don't really use, yeah, you don't really officially use as much as a city or an asylum. But Knight does have the problem of, again, the over reliance on the Batmobile, so you're not going to be using those gadgets as much as you think. But most variety of gadgets is there, is in Knight. No boss, no. Oh, I already said that. Um, I'm more interested like uh, playing all these games like I'm more interested to see what happens in Arkham City there is a mystery of what you know of again like, like what I said before there is a mystery of Rachel Gould and Joker so you have these two big big tier you know are like a heavy hitter a villains or whatever there there's two of them like in this story there is two of them in this story and you're not sure really uh, who's responsible for what and you know there's the joker virus going around and yeah i i trying to stop that so i can't wait to see what's gonna happen mr freeze plays a big part he big big role 
He's one of my favorite characters in the game, man. You can't wait to see what's going to happen. Two-Faced Catwoman. So, yeah, again, a quick, a quick a comparison. and Let me know like what you guys think. Uh, if you guys played any of these games. Older games, right? So, Asylum 2009, City 2011, Night 2015. Night is probably the first game I bought for PS4. So, I have a lot of memories of Night, right? Uh, out of all the games that I have. Uh, no, I mean like, uh, no, I mean, uh, out of all the probably superhero games. This is probably the most. This one and Infamous 2. Because I played it a lot. I played Arkham Knight a lot before. Asylum not as much for City 2. A lot. I played it a lot, you know? Yeah, and then if I was to say, I would say City has the best, probably the best game out of the three. Really, based, again, based on my opinion, because City um, has a perfect balance. It's not, the uh, mechanics are good, the side missions are good, the upgrades. Oh, yeah, upgrades, right? So, uh, Night is going to have the most amount of upgrades. But I feel like City, again, City utilized those upgrades and those gadgets the best, you know? But City, you know, had a perfect balance. Not too much backtracking for progression. Not too easy, not too hard. Best quality side missions. Best story. My favorite story out of all of them. Night is probably the most... Asylum is probably the most immersive. Um, you know, uh, you know, a lot of mystery. And it's uh, introducing the mechanics and the world, right? Kind of. And Joker, but yeah. Now again... Uh, comment down below if you played any of these. Let me know what you guys think about this comparison series. Comparing games within the same franchise. And all Rocksteady. I hope to I hope they make another Rocksteady game. I think they're making one Gotham Knights coming this year. I'm not sure if it's Rocksteady or it's one of our Montreal. But anyways, that's it. Like, subscribe, share the video. Thank you.